Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, everybody. Let's give God a hand, praise the Lord. Now you can give God a hand, praise. Don't clap and get to your house, say, so give God a hand, praise. Give the Lord a word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Truly, we do give honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He is our great God and Savior, and our soon coming King. Praise the Lord. We truly do give honor to the pastor of this church, of the Simpkins. I bless you, sir. I want to thank him for giving us an opportunity to be in his pulpit to minister the word of the Lord. You don't just let anybody come in your pulpit. That could be dangerous. It could mean damage control. You know, sometimes after there's a catastrophe, they have to come and the city has to do cleanup. If you let anybody come in your church and your pulpit, you might have to do some cleanup. Because everybody doesn't believe the truth. And everybody doesn't have the courage to preach it. Praise the Lord. It takes courage to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Paul said it is the power of God unto salvation. To everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So we thank God for him giving us this opportunity to come. We indeed do honor our pastor, Bishop Michael C. Geddes, who is the presiding bishop of the Apostolic Fellowship Churches of Christ Jesus. We thank God for him and for my mother, First Lady, Mother Janet Geddes. Our pastor indeed does send his greetings to everyone here in the house of the Lord, to Pastor Simpkins and to all of the saints of God gathered at this 40th General Assembly Convention in the name of the Lord. I want to give thanks for all of the men of God. Thank God for you. I bless you. Thank God for seeing our friend Elder Powell Amen. Looking in on us, just making sure we're doing all right. Thank God for Minister Dunkley as well. Amen. It's always good to see some familiar faces from the area. I bless you. And I want to thank God for all that are here. Amen. Thank God for Brother Simpkins. Amen. Brother Russell Simpkins, who contacted us and initially gave us the invitation. We thank God for him. Amen. Taking care of us. Amen. Coming into town. And I want to thank God for all of the saints that were able to come with us from the Episodic Fellowship Church in Broomfield. I'm just going to ask all of y'all to stand very briefly. Amen. So the saints continue. Amen. The Lord. Amen. I bless you. And thank God for my wife, Sister Yannick Gettys. Thank God for her. Amen. I'm just going to ask her to wave so you can see in what vicinity she is in. Amen. 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 My wife is not a big talker. So I know that asking her to get up and testify and all that kind of stuff, I like to keep the peace. Is that all right? So thank God for her and for our two sons. Amen. You okay? Yes? Okay. God bless you. Before we go into the word of the Lord, if you wouldn't mind, I'm going to ask two of our young ladies to come forward. Amen. And sing a song to the glory of the Lord. Sister Danielle Black and Sister Elizabeth Turner. Please greet them as they come to give glory to the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Truly, we give honor to the Spirit of Jesus Christ. 
Truly, we give honor to the spirit of Jesus Christ and thank him for this blessed privilege and opportunity to worship with you. Truly, our hearts are full, and we're not going to sing a complicated song on this evening. It just says, hallelujah, hallelujah. We just want to invite you to prepare your hearts for the word of God, to open your hearts and your minds to receive what God has for you. Just sing. Hallelujah.
Jesus. Lord Jesus. Our Father. Our God. Our Savior. Lord, we humble ourselves in your presence. For in your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Lord Jesus, we're here in your presence, seeking your glory. Hallelujah. Lord, we're coming to you now, asking for your favor. Hallelujah. Asking for your grace to be poured out upon us in the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, we're looking to you to enlighten us by your holy word. For your word is truth, Lord. You are truth. Your word is truth. Sanctify us, Lord God, through thy truth. Your word is truth, Lord, and we're depending on you right now to speak according to your holy oracles. We're depending on you, Lord, to come and inhabit the praises of your people. We're depending on you, Lord Jesus Christ, to fill this entire atmosphere, this property with your anointing. The anointing, Lord, that destroys every yoke. We take authority right now over the demons of hell that try to come to do whatever they can to hinder the going forth of your word. Satan, the Lord rebuke you right now. In the name of Jesus, we cancel your assignments to try to hinder the going forth and receiving of the word of the Lord. Lord God, I'm praying right now that you would arise and that your enemies be scattered. Let all them that hate you flee before you, Lord God. Be exalted. Be magnified in this place. Get the glory. Get all of the credit. For everything that transpires from here on in, Lord Jesus, we are yours. Use us now as you see fit and minister unto the hearts of your people. We thank you and we praise you and we magnify you for all things, both great and small. This is our prayer in the name, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. If you have your Bibles, please take them with me at this time. Turn to the Old Testament book of 2 Chronicles, the 7th chapter. I would like to read into your hearing verses 12 through 14. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verses 12 through 14. Hallelujah. Let us prayerfully consider this passage of scripture is a fundamental text for our lesson this evening. And those that know the word of prayer, pray with us that the Holy Ghost would come. In the name of Jesus Christ, the 12th verse of 2 Chronicles chapter 7. These words are recorded. And the Lord appeared, hallelujah, to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. If I shut up heaven, that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek 
my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Let the church say amen. amen. I want to talk to you tonight about the blessing of being God's people. The blessing of being God's people. I look at this text in 2 Chronicles chapter 6, chapter 7, particularly here in chapter 7 where we have read. And to me, it's one of the most beautiful passages in all of the scriptures. Because it's a passage that encapsulates who our God is, particularly regarding some of his admirable and wonderful attributes. This passage of scripture brings to light the attributes of our God like his love. Praise the Lord. It brings to light an attribute of God, his mercy. It talks about his provision talks about his judgment and his desire to bless. Praise the Lord. And in reading these chapters, we see that after the dedication of the temple, Solomon's temple, this, this great wonder, praise the Lord, that was put together by the hand of Solomon, the glory of the Lord, the Bible says, filled the house. Praise the Lord. Solomon, praise the Lord, was David's son. Most people know about King David. David was a dedicated man of God. I didn't say he was perfect, but he was dedicated. He loved the Lord with all of his heart. You never found David worshiping in the house of idols. Praise the Lord. His heart was solely toward God. And even when he made mistakes, some serious mistakes, adultery is serious. Murder is serious. The Bible says at one point that Satan influenced David to number the people. That was serious. Because it, it brought to light the fact that David was not putting his trust in the Lord. And he said earlier in Psalm 20, some people trust in chariots, some in horses, but we are supposed to remember the name of the Lord, our God. Let the church say amen. amen. So David, praise God, was so committed that he said, God, I want to build a house for you. And even though David made mistakes, one thing I know about him is that he didn't play. Praise the Lord. If you mess with David, he was liable to kill you. Ask Nabal. David didn't even get to him. Just the, the sound of the man's name made him choke up. Praise the Lord. Because David was a man of war. But, but in this context, that kind of worked against him. Because even though David wanted to build a house unto God, David, God told David, David, it, it's not going to be possible for you to build my house. There's too much blood on your hands. But it was well, David, God told him, that it was in thine heart. Praise the Lord. And he told David, you might not be able to do it, but out of your loins, I'll bring somebody that will honor me in a great way. He said, your son is going to build my house. And so here in 2 Chronicles, we see Solomon, David's son, fulfilling, amen, the desire and the legacy of his father. Praise the Lord. To build a house. And when this great edifice was brought together, Solomon, praise God, lifted up his hands in the congregation and began to pray. And he brought sacrifices unto the Lord. And they began to worship the Lord. There's nothing like a man being able to come with a full heart and worship the Lord. 
So many people are worshiping so many other things today, including themselves. Amen. And whenever you have a mind to worship the Lord, you ought to keep that mind all the days of your life. Because people are going crazy nowadays. They're losing their minds. They're worshiping entertainers like Beyonce. Now everybody wants to worship Beyonce and sing about the single ladies and all of these different things. But I don't know about you, Beyonce didn't die for me. Praise the Lord. Beyonce didn't shed any blood for me. Jay-Z, praise God, didn't hang on a cross for me. Praise the Lord. None of these people, none of these sports figures, entertainers, amen, all the way up to the president of these United States, none of these people are worth my worship. Because there's only one God. Oh, praise the Lord. Paul said there are Lord's many and God's many, but to us there is but one. So there's one Lord, one faith, that means that there's one system of belief. So don't tell me about Buddha because he don't match up. Don't tell me about Allah because he doesn't match up. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Confucius and Hare Krishna and all of these Eastern religions, these things don't match up. There's only one faith and there's only one baptism. One God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. Let the church say amen. amen. Y'all pray with me, praise the Lord. I, I, you don't mind if I preach a little bit. You praise God, amen. And so when he began to spread forth his hands and pray and offer sacrifice, the Bible says the glory of the Lord filled the house so much so to where the priest, amen, that ministered unto the Lord, they couldn't even go in there anymore. I don't know about you, but I long for the days where the people of God to come together with such intensity and enthusiasm, amen, in singularity of heart and mind, amen, in such a spirit of one accord until the Shekinah glory, amen, enters into the dedicated place of worship, amen, so much so into where you got to run out of here on the South Franklin Street and people are wondering what's happening down there. You can tell them the glory of the Lord has the house. Well, praise the Lord. And so, amen, Israel that day rejoice. Amen. Rejoice in the Lord, Paul said, always. And again, I say rejoice. They gave glory unto God and they lifted up their voices in worship. However, God knew Israel. Hallelujah. And therefore, he had to talk to Solomon regarding the state of their hearts. Praise the Lord. I don't know about you or if you've noticed, but sometimes when things are going well, people don't mind serving the Lord. Amen. And when, and when everybody's kind of spiritually fat and kind of sitting back and pushing back from the table and rubbing their stomach, praise God, because they're so satisfied in Jesus. Amen. You don't mind serving the Lord, but how many know that every day is not going to be sunshine down here? Amen. It's going to be times of struggle. It's going to be times of testing, praise God. Amen. And, and sometimes, amen, when those tests and trials are not around and we're enjoying ourselves, we tend to forget about the Lord. Praise God. We tend to forget about what God has done and we just kind of relax and are at ease in Zion. Praise God. And with this reality in mind, God spoke to Solomon and he told him, if there was a time when Israel turned away from the Lord and had to suffer his judgment, if ever they were subjected to the chastening of the Lord because of their disobedience, if ever, amen, the people saw the wrath of God poured out upon them because of their sin, if God's people Amen. Who were called by his name would lift up their hearts again unto the Lord. 
the Bible said the Lord would bless them. Let the church say amen. amen. And the condition here, the condition here, if you look back in the scripture, verse 13 said, if I shut up heaven, if I command the locusts, if I send pestilence, if my people, the condition here, which is the beauty of the scripture, is that the promise is to God's people. Praise the Lord. These promises that we read about here in 2 Chronicles are promises to God's people. Thank the Lord. Amen. These are not necessarily promises to the sinner. Praise God. And I'm not suggesting to you that God doesn't hear a sinner's prayer, praise God, for deliverance. But I want us to understand tonight that the scripture clearly lets us know that there are blessings that only belong to God's people. Praise the Lord. Amen. If my people, praise God. Amen. And I'm reminded when I thought about this, about 1 Peter chapter 2, amen, around the ninth verse where the apostle led by the Spirit of God writes, but ye are a chosen generation. Talking about, amen, you who are here serving the Lord. Amen. You are a chosen generation. Bible said, amen, you're a royal priesthood. How many glad about that tonight? Bible said you are a holy nation, amen, and you are a peculiar people. Now, amen, some folk out in the world might think we're strange, amen, but that's all right, amen, because uh, I don't mind being strange to the world, because quite frankly, some of them are strange to me. Amen. Praise God. In the world, in the church, amen, are not mixed together. Amen. As some of these folk would want us to believe. Amen. The Bible declares that there should be a difference between holy and unholy and between clean and unclean. Amen. I know, praise God. Y'all, y'all, y'all don't want y'all getting mad with me, but I know sometimes, amen, these churches are getting so weak now. And, and to where no matter who you are, you can marry, amen, and marry again, and, and, and the other person's still alive, and you can just keep on marrying. And, and even if you say you saved, amen, and you find some dead cat who say they're not saved off the street, as long as you drag them in here, amen, and you so-called love them, amen, some pastors will marry them anyhow, but Paul said, be ye not unequally yoked unequally yoked together with unbelief. Y'all know the scripture? Amen. What fellowship, what concord, what communion in essence is the church having with the world? Praise God. There's supposed to be a difference. It's called the process of sanctification. Praise the Lord. And yes, there's still some churches that believe in sanctification. Praise God. Because I look at it this way. There are people out in the world who are struggling. There are people out in the world who are dying. There are people out in the world who are hooked on addictions, praise God. They're slaves to drugs. They're slaves to alcohol. They're slaves to cigarettes. Praise God. They're slaves to pornography. They're slaves to fornication and adultery. And everybody out in the world doesn't like the way they're living. And so when they come to their mind and the Lord touches their mind, the first thing they do is try to run to a church to see if they can get some help. Amen. So what does it look like if they're coming off the street into the church looking for help and everything in the church looks like what they left in the world? There ought to be a difference if the people on the outside who that devil is killing is trying to come to God. They ought to see something different when they come in here that lets them know God is real. And there's no God like our God. If you want deliverance, he can deliver you. If you want healing, he can heal you. If you need salvation, he can save you. And so I shouldn't be trying to run to the church and then away from the prostitute and find a bunch of prostitutes in the church. 
I should be running away from the pit outside and find a bunch of pits in the church. I should find a hot ass. All by itself. That's what I should find in the church. And if there's anything that's not holiness, it ought to come back and get right with God and do it now. Y'all see where I'm coming from now? Praise our God. There ought to be a difference because people really need help. Amen. The homosexual, amen, he don't want to be that way. The lesbian, she doesn't want to be that way. Amen. Ain't no reason for us to beat them down. If they come to us, they're coming because they want help. Praise God. So when they come in, amen, let them know what the word says. God can deliver you from that demon and stop you from switching and make you strike and walk right. That's what God will do. He'll pick you up, he'll turn you around and place your feet. We're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and an exclusive people. Oh, praise the Lord. Why? Praise God that we should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into this marvelous light. Praise our God. How many of y'all got the Holy Ghost in here? Amen. If you have the Spirit of God, you've been called out of darkness into this marvelous light. So stop hanging around darkness. Stop trying to sneak around in darkness. Stop trying to find darkness. Amen. Jesus said when he was here, he he was the light of the world, but he said, I'm going away now, and now you're the light of the world. You're the salt of the earth. Amen. And if you got a light, you ought to let that light shine so somebody else can see it and find the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. Amen. Y'all sit with me. Amen. And so we ought to come out of darkness into this marvelous light. Why? Which in time past, in verse 10 of 1 Peter 2, we were not a people. Praise the Lord. Sometimes, y'all, y'all forgive me. I feel like preaching a few minutes. I only got a few minutes here, but that's all right. Sometimes when we spend a while in church, amen, and we, we have our suits on and our hats on and our nice high heel shoes that we can walk around in and long skirts and nice tie. We forget that we weren't always that way. Praise the Lord. We weren't always saved as the saints say. We weren't always sanctified. We weren't always filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Some of us were the, the, the worst of the worst, as the folk might say. And if it had not been for the Lord, praise the Lord, who was on our side, who called us to here, we'd still be out there looking crazy. Somebody know what I'm talking about? And so we got to remember that we were not always a people. But now we are the people of God. Praise the Lord. We didn't always obtain mercy, but now we have obtained mercy. Let the church say amen. Amen. Because the Bible teaches me that we were born sinners. And I know the Muslims won't get with me on that one because they don't believe in original sin, but that's all right. Amen. I know what the Bible says. The Bible says in Psalm 51 and 5, Behold, I was shaping in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. Amen. Paul said in Romans chapter 3 verse 23, for all have sinned and come short. We, we've missed the mark of God's high calling. We've come short of the glory of God. That's everybody. Everybody was born that way. Amen. And that's why we can't turn our nose up and if it's raining like it was today some of us would drown with our proud selves walking around here like we came out of the Mary's womb. You didn't come out of Mary's womb. There was only one person that did that. Hey, Amen. And he's supposed to be in you helping you to humble yourself. 
get myself in trouble. He's supposed to be helping you to humble yourself. Amen. So you can uh, condescend to men of low degree and help somebody else. You that are spiritual. Amen. If you say you're strong, you're supposed to restore. Amen. Those that might go astray in a spirit of meekness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. Anybody can go down. Amen. From the pastor down to the child. If they get lifted up in pride. Praise the Lord. That's why we have to humble ourselves and every day say, Lord, whatever's in my heart, praise the Lord. Amen. That's not like you. Hallelujah. I need you to get it out of me. Amen. David, I believe, said it best when he said, search me, oh God. Hallelujah. And know my heart. Mm, Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way, yes, even in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Let the church say amen. And we were born sinners, but the Bible lets us know that we didn't have to stay that way. We had an opportunity to become God's people. And so how did that take place? The Bible lets us know that we heard the word of the Lord for the Bible said that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord how shall they hear without a preacher and how shall they preach except he be sin oh God why do you drop these things in my mind I'm trying to be nice I know some folk don't care who preaches to them. Amen. If they say what they want them to say, they're all right with them. Some of these preachers are so spineless, it's ridiculous. They won't preach nothing from the Bible outside of miracles and mansions. They just want you to know that God can bless you. But they never tell you that some of God's blessings are conditional. Meaning if you don't do what you're supposed to do, don't expect God to do nothing. Come on and say amen. Oh, praise the Lord. So you can't live like a devil and get the blessing of a saint. It don't work that way. You can't be what you want to be and do what you want to do and say what you want to say. I've never seen so many church folk nowadays still cursing and still swearing. Hey, man, you supposed to have control over that tongue, praise God. I don't care how hard you hit your thumb with that hammer, you better say, Jesus. You better call on the Lord to help you. Keep your thumb from throbbing. Ain't nothing else supposed to be coming out of your mouth. Hey man, how can a spring bring forth sweet and bitter water? It don't work that way, Pastor. Hey man, we're supposed to be clean on the inside. Y'all leave me alone. Hey man, but some folks don't care who preaches to It could be a man, it could be a woman. Hey man, even though the Bible talks about that too. Yes, it does. And I'm not trying to demean no woman. I'm not trying to put a woman down, hip hop does that for me. Hey Amen. I don't have to put no women down. That's why I don't listen to that hip hop nonsense. Because that don't do nothing but make folk want to fight the police and make them want to degrade women. Hey Amen. I'm not putting a woman down. The Bible says that she's your help me. If you listen to her, you can avoid a lot of nonsense and headaches and heartaches. That's why I thank God for my wife. Sometimes she say, maybe we should do this. And sometimes if I'm hard headed, I stub my foot. Sometimes when I listen, we do all right. Hey, Amen. But the Bible tells me one thing she can do. One thing she can do is what I'm doing right now. Come on, somebody. I love her. I respect her. Hey, Amen. I'll carry her all the days that I can. I've been over backwards from my woman. But she better not try to take this mic from me. She knows her place, I know my place, and when we work together, God is glorified. <laughs> Hallelujah. Y'all hot with me now, but you brought me down here to preach, so let me not disappoint you. Oh, praise our God. 
so I wasn't always saved. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. I wasn't always, amen, as I am in Christ, and I'm still being worked on. How many of y'all still going through the fire? How many of y'all still getting purged? How many of y'all still getting pruned? Come on, it may not feel good, amen, but anybody that endures chastening, you're a son and not an illegitimate child. Is that all right? Is that all right? Well, praise our God. And so, amen, I came and heard the word of the Lord from a true man of God that let me know that if I was in sin, there was a way out. Oh, praise our God. And all I had to do was come unto Jesus. But Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Rest from what, Jesus? Rest from your sinning ways. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let the church say amen. And so I came, as he said, if you take my yoke upon you and learn of me, I'm meek and lowly in heart, and you can find rest unto your soul. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Let the church say amen. And so I perceived the love of God. As the Bible tells me in 1 John 3.16, Hereby perceive we the love of God because God laid down his life for us. You say, how did God do it? If God was a spirit, because the Bible lets me know that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. Thank God for Pentecostal theology that allows my confusion to be wiped away. I don't have to pray to the Father one day and the Son another day and the Holy Spirit another day. All I have to do is call one name of oh God. But the Bible tells me that he had given him a name that is above every name. And at the name Jesus, I need somebody to shout Jesus. At the name Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven, of things in earth, and things under the earth. Even those demons got to be subject to the name Jesus. Let the church shout Jesus. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. And so when I say Jesus, I get all all that God is for in him dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead bodily talking about Jesus and we are complete in him who is the head of all principalities and power when you say Jesus you get power when you say Jesus you get healing. When you say Jesus, you ought to feel something. Uh, somebody said, ain't no harm done. Calling on Jesus. Ain't no harm done. Calling on the Lord. They said, I got the Holy Ghost. I wasn't calling on any other name but Jesus. Shout yeah. I love the name Jesus. Whatever I need, all I got to do is say Jesus. The Bible said, ask and it shall be given. If you call Jesus, he'll give you what you need. Because I serve God who is powerful. 
powerful. I serve a God who can't be beat. He hasn't lost a case yet. Hasn't lost a battle. Nobody is able to feel him. He is high. He's lifted up. He's holy. He's mighty. He's great. And greatly to be praised. If you love him, shout it. shows up. How many of y'all know the devil is showing some time? Try to come right up in the church and try to take the church over. All you got to say is Jesus. And the devil backs up off you. Oh, God. I don't, don't tell me nothing about no trinity. I don't want to hear nothing about no trinity. Because the devil don't even believe in the trinity. The devil himself don't buy that stuff. He may you believe that lie, but he don't even believe there's a trinity. The Bible said that the devil believes that there's one God and he trembles. If you want to make the devil tremble, call on the name of the one God. If you want to make the devil back up off you, call on the name of the one God. If you want to kick the devil out your house, call on the name of the one God. If you want to get him out of your job, if you want him out of your marriage, if you want him out of your finances, if you want him out of your church, just get down and pray and say, Jesus! 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 I came into the family of God calling on the name of the Lord and when I came in here the preacher said to me repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sin and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's all you need to do, my friend. Turn away from your sin. Be baptized in the name of the Lord and call on the name of Jesus until he comes in you. And contrary to popular church belief, when the Lord comes inside of you, it's more than a warm feeling. It's more than a waving of the hand. And I accept the Lord in my heart as my personal Savior. Any baby that's born ought to make some noise. Come on and say that. If you get a baby that's born and it's not making any noise, they call it a stillbirth. Is that right? Every baby that's born ought to make some noise. And the Bible said, Jesus said, marvel not that I say to you, he must be born again. And so when you come through that water, you ought to get some spirit. And it ought to come on you. Oh, Jesus, to make some noise. Oh, God. I'm crazy sometimes, but I just feel something in my soul. Sometimes it makes me want to jump. Sometimes it makes me want to turn. Sometimes it makes me want to run. Sometimes it makes me want to shout. But whatever I do, I make some noise. I make some noise. I make some noise. Shout yeah. Shout yeah. If you made some noise when you received the Holy Ghost, tell your neighbor, make some noise. noise. 
on the inside. Oh, God, it'll get in you so much that even if you don't have an outgoing temperament, you might not be gregarious, but that's all right. Because this same spirit will make you do something. Is that right? It'll fill you from the crown of your head. Soul of your feet and make you do something. They don't speak out in a new tongue as the spirit gives utterance. If you know what I'm talking about, lift your hand and shout, yeah. But let me tell you something. Every day is not rosy. Y'all hear what I'm saying? I said every day is not rosy. You might feel on a mountaintop today. But here come the enemy trying to knock you out. Come on, but you ought to remember who you are. Oh, y'all not hear me. I said you ought to remember who you are. The Bible said if you got the Holy Ghost speaking with other tongues as the Spirit gives others, you're God's people. How many glad to be God's people in here? If you're God's people, God made a promise to you. He said no matter how low you get, no matter how hard the struggle, no matter what comes in your life, you might even stumble, you might even fall, but if you can get your mind together, if you can get your heart in the right place, I don't care if you're on the ground, come on somebody, but the devil try to put you on the ground and beat you down till you feel like you ain't got nothing left, but I heard Job say, Oh my God, Job said there is hope of a tree if it be cut down that it can burn again. What do you need? The scent of water. What is the scent of water? It's the anointing. Come on, church. It's the anointing that destroyed the yoke. Somebody shout, yeah. I don't care how low you get. If my people, if my people, if my people that are called by my name will humble themselves, oh Jesus, and pray, seek my face, turn from the way away, then I'm going to hear from heaven, I'll forgive you. How many y'all glad for forgiveness? Jesus. 